regardless of where they would be and how they would be. Um, I want to get another little bit in here, and this may this may start to remind me where we were a while ago. Um, pardon me. I said I'm working on it. All right, it sure doesn't get it back. I want you to bring it in. Um, I don't want you to leave here tonight with your main thought on the Godhead. That's not where I'm leading. It's amazing we get into these areas and immediately everybody goes toward the Godhead. But uh, I want my, my area that I want you to really study on is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Um, and the order of the Holy Ghost, the operation of the Holy Ghost, the working of the Holy Ghost. And here in verse 26 of uh, John 14, and if you get that back, lift your hand. Uh, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, so now we have the Holy Ghost as being the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Ghost comes in the family name, and that family name is Jesus. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So one of the chief works of the Holy Ghost is to teach you and to bring into your remembrance everything that you may receive from the Word of God because Christ is not here teaching you. I'm standing here teaching. But Christ was teaching them. Whatsoever I have said unto you. But now, change that. The operation of the Holy Ghost is, is to bring to your remembrance all things that you're taught. And to guide you. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. How much is the Holy Ghost really teaching the church now? How much do you remember? See, this is the operation of the Holy Ghost. Uh, when I went into this study and when I got into this tonight, uh, I, I, I didn't want to necessarily go into the Godhead, but I'm thankful we have and we did. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure we've learned much from it. But my aim is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in the church, because I mean, and I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. But unless the church, the church, not the onlookers, not those spectators, not the crowd around, but the church, learns the operation of the Holy Ghost, and you can't do that without the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't do it without the Holy Ghost, right. uh, unless we learn it, unless we operate in it. We will never see. It will be. It will be. But we won't see it. We won't be a part of it. We won't get into it. We will never see the glorious church that Christ will bring back to this earth before he comes again. Amen. Without the church that he wants to, he'll, he'll bring people in to that truth. He'll bring those that are called those that are selected, those that are foreknown, those that are predestinated, he'll bring them into that. But the, 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 the church itself, the collective church, will not see that operation of the Holy Ghost unless the Holy Ghost teaches us and guides us and leads us. Well, Brother Marlowe, you're teaching us. I am. But my words are my words as an instrument of God 
But I, in those words, the Holy Ghost has to teach you. The Holy Ghost has to teach you. The Holy Ghost has to lead you. Because we can have an hour and a half lesson, and you can hear me say it, but if the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, does not lead and guide you into it, where it can operate in you, and it can't do that unless you have the Holy Ghost in you. Right. And the Holy Ghost, and I want to make this statement again, is more than just one single phase that we say that's the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's the operation of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a vast working operational gift, teaching, guiding, comforting, Amen. and it is meant to bring the church Amen. into divine perfection. Amen. It's, it's meant to bring the latter rain. Yes. It's meant, meant to bring the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Ghost. Uh, there's some other scriptures, but we don't have time. Young people read it's getting later. And uh, but I, Tyler, I don't want to leave you out, but Brother Robert, let me come back to you. All right. What I was going to say was when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost the evidence of speaking in tongues, we become a new creature. Our problem is we war against that new creature. The old man is still warring. So we refuse to give up to him. So that's the reason we see that devil all the time. Even though they speak in tongues, you can still have that devil in you. Yes. You're not allowing the new creature to operate. Yes. So consequently, you have all these these battles going on and we have people running away from church all the time. Yes. Because they refuse to allow the Holy Ghost have control. You gotta, be, sure. you gotta be sold out. You have to be sold out. Did you get that capsule? Amen. Amen. That's in a nutshell. Yep. What controls you manifests you. That's yeah. right. Amen. Yeah. If it's the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Ghost is power. That's yeah. right. Amen. The Holy Ghost is comfort. The Holy Ghost is a guide. Yeah. So you're going to see that. If it's not there to where it can operate, then you wouldn't see it. If it's there and you don't let it operate yeah, exactly. through your submission to it, That's right. then it can't operate. The Holy Ghost has to operate through your submission. That's right. If your submission is not submitted, then the Holy Ghost will not manifest. That's exactly right. And that's why I'm saying tonight, I'd like for the church to study the Holy Ghost. And I'd like for us to study the gift that God has given us. And first of all, know He has. Know that it's there not just because we speak in tongues. Know that it is there because we speak in tongues. I'm going to thread the needle at this end before we leave. Know that the Holy Ghost is there because we do speak it in tongues. That's a manifestation. That's a sign. But know that it's not just there because we speak in tongues only. But there's a multitude of other things that's flowing out of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Holiness. Righteousness. Godliness. Love, charity, yeah. Yeah. peace, long suffering, yeah. Yeah. steadfastness, yeah. character, yeah. a new creature, as you said, in Christ. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, I never got past John 14 and 26. I sure would have liked to have got into John 16, but we'll go there. We'll go there. Brother Tyler, now you. And uh, just real quick, Pastor Marlo and the family of the church. Thank you, Brother Mark. I, you know, the Lord said, um, I believe, and forgive me because I'm paraphrasing here, that uh, if you do not receive the kingdom <coughs> as a child, then you will not walk into the kingdom. I always found that the Holy Spirit within me was that spirit that was. As I was when I was a child, that, 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 that spirit that didn't know what sin was, that wasn't afraid, 
to venture off, that had that covering, that, you know, uh, only knew love, only knew laughter. You know, when I was a young man, my mom had a problem with me visiting strangers. I used to just show up at people's doorsteps. But it was always people that the Lord led me to because they were always the good people. I always believe that, you know, that's, that's what protects me to this day. Whenever, you know, there's something, I, 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 what I'm trying to say is, is I, I follow that, I try to follow that spirit. I'm trying to get back into that. That spirit that doesn't know no sin, that spirit that's like a child. That's what you got to find because the Lord says that we should come as a child <laughs> expecting that we can do all things through him as a child. That's how all things are done. I mean, so I believe. I mean, I, that's how I see it. And I think that that's one of the secrets and one of the keys. And that's one of the things that I've been working on is trying to get back to that Still be a man, still, you know, still be, still be, like you said, Pat, one time, Pastor Marlo, have spirits of children, but be men and, you know, be grown men and women. But I think that we can go, I think that when we're this, when we're, when we're grown, we forget that we can go back into that child spirit where nothing can destroy us, nothing can harm us. If we got our mindset as that innocent little child that's got that perfect covering over them, that, you know, that we have the Lord with us, that, you know, the Lord, you know, there's nothing that can be. That could, that could harm us, and there's nothing that we couldn't achieve and that we couldn't do. A child's imagination can manifest many great things through love, healing, many miracles. And, you know, so the, I just wanted to give you that because that was on Real heart. good, Brother Tom. And I love I, I agree with that. The scripture reads with except you become as a little child. As a little child. I agree with that. Help me, Lord, to be a little child. Help me, Lord, to be a little child. Praise uh, help me to be a child. Uh, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Sister yeah. Kenzer, this will be the closing uh, comment. I think verse 23 there is your key. It says, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our, our abode with him. So you've got to keep his word, his commandments and follow, and he will come abode with you. Sister Shirley spoke of order. That order has to be there. Love him, keep his commandments, and he will abide with us. See, that's, she said, Brother Marla, the order. Uh, say this in a nutshell here real quickly. I think anything has to have structure, arrangement, and order. Right. Amen. If your home doesn't have structure, arrangement, order, you've got a problem. Yeah, Everything you do has to have structure of business, have structure, yeah. arrangement, order. Yep. I have to have structure, arrangement, order in my life. Yeah. A church has to have structure, arrangement, order. Yeah. A Christ has, God does, the Holy Spirit does. Uh, so uh, we will come then, if, they'll, if they will love me and keep our commandments, then we, we will come and make our abode. Amen. So I know I have him in my abode, I know I have him in my, my vessel, if I keep his commandments, if I love him. He promised that. He said, if you'll do this, I'll come. There's structure, there's an order, and I can, I can, I can live in you. And I can be there as your God. Um, and, and you'll call me uh, your God, and I'll call you my child. Um, we've had a wonderful night, I think, in the Word. Uh, Sister Joyce, you've had your hand up for a long time, but now, is it real brief because we, you know, we're ready to go here? Is it, is it within a minute or two? <laughs> In John 14, it says in verse 28, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. You go down to verse 29. And now I have told you before, it came to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. 30. Hereafter, I will talk 
will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Amen. The world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do arise, let us go hence. All right. Amen. Thank you, Sister. All right. Very good. Very well said. Let's get ready for a great weekend and great uh, The bus is going down to Punta Gorda tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Our mission church there is awaiting strength, praise, songs, lifting up the Lord. And it'll leave here at 6 o'clock. The bus will. And we'll be gathered here Saturday night at 7.30. And we'll be here Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, 10.30, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Let's look forward to a great weekend. And everybody said yes, amen. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. All right. May the Lord. Did I dismiss? <laughs>